Hi, good afternoon to all of you. So let us start with this. So how was your mock at 10 in terms of your perception of level of difficulty? As far as I am concerned, uh, I think the paper was moderate to tough when it comes to RCs, when it, com uh, when it comes to your summary based questions even were Hitesh, your accuracy was 75%, uh, sorry, 57%. Had it been 75, you would have been happy more than. So nothing to worry about uh, because uh, Hitesh, we uh, deliberately set the wrong choices in this paper. But uh, maintain your confidence because with the just uh, on the basis of single paper or one or two papers, we cannot judge, we cannot evaluate ourselves. Point is that it is not that you lose only single battle and you lose the war. Point is this, we have to learn from our mistakes, don't, don't worry. Sometimes it happens. So no issues. Uh, coming on to the scanning part. Yes, I think a few of uh, students have joined this session only. For the first time seeing their names, Ashutosh, Tapan, Uday, Neil. So how? Good afternoon to all of you. How are you all? So don't worry, Hitesh. Uh, I think attempt was a little over. But point is, uh, we have to maintain our tempo and uh, believe in our ability abilities. So, okay, uh, so let's start with the analysis. So in this paper, there were uh, seven difficult questions and I think that we should get at least three correct or at the max three correct. Um, 23 medium questions were there, moderate level of difficulty and uh, out of 23, I, uh, I believe that we should uh, think of 70%, 60%. 70 means 16 questions and easy, four questions were easy only. And therefore, I think that uh, here accuracy should go 90%. So it has to be 3. So minimum uh, 16 plus 3 plus 3. 22 at least we should get correct in order to sail through, in order to get a good percentile. So this we have to keep in mind. So I have selected few questions only. Just to uh, recap, revisit these questions. What went wrong and where. So I have picked up this question number 52nd. It is based on part error, grammar part error. It checks these kind of questions, check our grammar knowledge, grammar fundamentals. I have seen so many times that while attempting the questions, people are not able to recall the tricks or rules so called. But while attempting the paper at home or at a very comfortable place, they are able to locate the errors. Am I right guys? While doing, while attempting the paper, in real time setting, we are not able to even recall this simplest thing, simplest thing. And whenever we take this paper home and try to attempt the paper home, then uh, uh, we are able to track even the you know, major ones. So point is uh, that uh, we get little conscious. It is all in mind. So we have to maintain, and this is a general principle of corporate sector also. Also, even after doing MBA, uh, you'll be, uh, you'll come across this particular mindset that you have to be ultra cool, ultra calm, ultra composed in order to solve the problems. These are just minor questions, but in real, um, after you know, I'm your MBA you shall be facing many challenges and one cannot take or make good decisions until unless his mind is ultra cool, ultra composed and I'm using, deliberately I'm using the word ultra and uh, it's not that but just by looking, if you look like a dude or cool dude, you are cool and whenever these cool dudes have to face challenges, they are the first one to lose their pools. So, in this, okay, uh, coming on to the question part, philosophy, we are done with the philosophy part now. So, we do use uh, apostrophe S whenever we want to show the position. So, first sentence, we have to pick up the grammatically correct ones, so we have to find out the incorrect ones. So, let's try incorrect ones. First was incorrect, uh, the mistake is just a year back the world's now, world itself is a plural collective noun. There is no need to add S after apostrophe. My point is, we you, we add, we write apostrophe after S if the noun is plural. For example, boys hostel, where all boys live. Delhi's Kutub Minar. So, Delhi is singular. People's car. So, it cannot be people S, then apostrophe S. 
people itself is a collective noun so peoples people apostrophe as peoples so first a was wrong yeah hitesh you should be for us and uh, prashant has left the session so uh, the another question another sentence uh, which is wrong here is d sentence they argued that modi visit was was about style so now the sentence is in past tense therefore optics is overpowering now this can, this is called um, tense balance tense balance is out the first half is in past second half should also be in past tense this is called tense balance what we call parallelism and uh, that optics overpower the real issues so it has to in place of is overpowering powering it has to be uh, overpowered so it's called tense balance so uh, make sure that you keep revising grammar fundamentals like uh, subject verb agreement and uh, modifiers parallelism etc so as to get grip on this so whenever we come across this grammar based question we should be able to yes prashant you are again playing leaving and joining i think there is some technical problem if you are not able to hear me properly completely just check your network settings connections you would be able to okay uh, moving on to next question guys okay now very interesting passage it says that if you try to face any situation or longer period of time let's say for centuries it is for sure that evolutionary changes will occur be it in uh, living beings plants human beings or in animals so this will definitely happen Yes, Pallavi, you have asked the word Carlism. So, didn't you check the Google or the dictionary for this word? Just tell me the line where it is mentioned, so we can make out, we can check out the contextual meaning of this word. Otherwise, Carl is related to philosophy. Okay. Now, if I look at the structure, I'll come back to you. I'll get back to you, Pallavi. After a short while, uh, let me tell the structure of this passage. So it says that uh, idea that evolution of dog was just not a matter of artificial selection. It happened. It was at least as much case of wolves adapting to the ways of man by natural selection. So it is how it was not spontaneous. It was not uh, you know momentary or uh, flash. It was a very gradual process. It happened over a period of time. and uh, second paragraphs yeah palvi you have to revise the concept of subject verb agreement carlism no no not carlism not carlism okay you are asking me what i pronounced it is parallelism parallel in mathematics the word is parallel is there so it is parallelism carl is not uh, carl actually carl jung uh was a philosopher so i thought that in the entire paragraph which i am reading right now uh didn't find this word so i was just looking now uh, okay fine palavi uh getting back to the passage so it says that uh, real wolves were pack hunters they used to hunt in groups so village dogs are scavengers means they they used to feed on dead and decaying better uh, matter wolves were scavengers too but they are not temporarily suited to scavenging human rubbish because of their long flight distance now flight distance means whenever we see or hint whenever we get the hint of any single danger we'll try to leave that place or we'll try to move away run away is called flight distance third says a natural react uh, selection will work on flight distances that is moving it one way or another way along the continuum if condition change over the evolutionary time It's a kind of science-based passage. Interesting read. You have to maintain your focus. I'll come on to 57th question right now. So it says that uh, uh, some kind of proportionality has been given. So if a plant plants means plenty of new food sources available in the form of village rubbish dump enters the world of wolves means jungle or the forest that is going to shift the optimum point towards shorter end, shorter end of flight distance. Shorter end means come what may. uh you will try to uh you know uh, allow the enemy to approach closer that is called shorter flight distance 
and as soon as decreasing flight distance second para next paragraph decreasing flight distance behavior will measure what we might uh, my might call increasing tameness now if the flight distance decreases this will increase tameness means we can tame we can control at this early stage only interaction between human and these incipient dogs were hostile if wolves were becoming domesticated it was by self domestication not by de de uh, deliberate domestication by the people it says that this paragraph is a little tricky it says that it uh, it is not that we are able to compel we are able to uh, you know domesticate these wolves it is all because of evolutionary changes shorter the distance flight distance <coughs> means the animal is not scared scared of us so it's not uh, not at all uh, bothered about what is happening around so easier for us to domesticate that is what we can make out from this so while uh, fox's second last paragraph tricky to handle and russian genesis he conducted one experiment that uh, even after certain generations the last says that after 35 generations tame foxes not only behave like a domestic cat means change happened foxes became like you know they started uh, they acquired the characteristics of dogs and they started looking like them only so that's why even after marriage lot many changes happen adventurous guy will look like tame dog Okay, uh, so coming back to the question part, in this second paragraph, second last paragraph, he, he experimented, he selected, he uh, categorized animals into three groups, one, two, three, and club three were those fled from the bit of person, second would allow themselves to be handled but show no positive response, club, class first, club tamest of all, means wagging their tails, winning etc. When the cups grew up, the experimenters expanded bread only these tamest class. So uh, that is how the tameness is proportional to flight distance. Shorter it is, inversely proportional. More would be the tameness. That is what we can make out from this paragraph. Coming back to the few questions based on this. So what behavior you would expect of a 10th generation feral dog means wild dog. So uh, listen this carefully because we should know the meanings of also. Uh, that dog is whose great race part 10 ancestors. Means previous 10 generations. Uh, uh, ancestor was domesticated means taint but escaped back to the forest so last paragraph says that uh, the changes would happen definitely no doubt but this will happen after 35th generation we are talking about only 10th generation so uh, guys so they'll behave like more or less similar the previous uh, 10 occasion would be 11th. We are talking about now 11th generation. 11th would be something similar to the previous 10 generation. Nothing much will happen. No more changes. Not um, many changes would be there. So it would be similar to the previous generations. So am I clear, Hitesh? You asked me this particular question. So nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. So the guy's answer would be 57th question so because uh, it's kind of uh, a little commonsensical based question we have to be extra careful about uh, whatever data is given to us in passages deliberately we give the uh, data because we know that uh, space is limited we have to set very short passages for the cats so whatever lines we put right uh, they all are very important so next time Prashant no they wouldn't be like wolf because we are talking about 10th generation dog and anything that will change will happen after 35 generations. So it cannot be. So answer to this particular question is C. It would behave like quintessential village dog. Am I clear Prashant? The last paragraph says that changes will happen after 35 generations. Am I clear Prashant? Press yes or no. Yes Prashant, am I audible? Okay, fine. So, uh, dog, uh, we are talking about just 10, uh, 10 generations back. Nothing uh, much will happen. Quantessential means more or less like, more like dog than like wolves or fox. That's why quantessential. Just to emphasize on, just to give you the hint, uh, believe me, uh, while framing questions or options, we do drop hints so as so that you are able to pick up the answers easily. The quantessential is a very strong keyword here actually. Even without reading the passage, uh, you know, but this, just last paragraph I would have answered this question even without reading. In my earlier sessions, I have told so many times uh, that how come without reading the passage, just by skimming, uh, we can answer few questions. Okay, uh, coming on to this uh, next question. So, the, based on the same passage, 
Uh, now this is a little GK based question. Uh, we all are helpless. I am also because uh, this checks your a little bit of GK, your common sense. The life is such and life is like that, cat is like that and business world is like that. Most of times you are challenged by the world, by the environment, by the atmosphere regarding our common sense. So uh, of the world uh, birds mentioned below, which would you like to shortest flight distance means which particular animal will allow you to come closer? Hummingbird? Have you ever tried? Have you seen this yourself? How come you uh, two biologists like Ashutosh and Prashant are so sure about this? We have got two biologists. Okay, Prashant, just joking. Don't take anything, any my jokes seriously. Uh, just to keep the session light. Eagle. No, no, no. They'll keep on eating or scavenging. Eating. You read it somewhere. Just imagine a sparrow, hummingbird. Now sparrows are extinct. I'm talking about the that uh, normal common sparrow, that browns and something white. So crow is the answer. Shortest flight distance will not. Uh, Prashant, now I'm audible, Prashant. So, crow, the answer to this question is crow. Shortest flight distance means will allow you. Now, it is, uh, we can't uh, rely on, we can't bet on these kind of questions because they check our kind of GK or common sense. If we are not able to recall, my purpose of picking uh, this question was to make you aware that don't worry about these kind of questions. Rarest of rare, uh, you'll find these kind of questions being placed once or twice out of 34 question there's no guarantee even that this will come this type of questions will come but point is that if they come in case so we should not worry we should not rely even on our gk because uh, these questions are you know seem to be very easy but uh, we can easily get them wrong so don't worry answer is crow my point is uh, my point was not to tell you the correct answer just point you uh, was to tell you that don't uh, try to bet on these kind of questions don't try to bet on these kind of questions. Answer is pro, no doubt. Okay, moving on to the next question. Okay, now all of the following could be characteristics of tame foxes. Now we are talking about the tame foxes, domesticated. So things have changed. And uh, we are talking about now uh, probably uh, approaching 35th generation or even after 35th generation. So what will happen? Everything will happen. All of the things would happen, following happen, except the, you know, we have been asked except so they uh, lost their foxy pelage pelage is fur and became piebald black and white obviously just like you know uh, dogs this will happen because uh, their even characteristics acquired by habits characteristics more or less uh, hitesh i think the option which were uh, close uh, they were one and four one and four so they lost, yes, this will definitely happen that the, their foxy prick ears will replace by doggy floppy ears. Yes, because he mentioned that uh, tail started, they started wagging the tail and uh, ears dropped, etc. This will also happen. Female came on heat every six months like bitch instead of every uh, year like a vixen means families of wolf is called vixen. So this also will happen because after acquiring the characteristics, physiological changes would also happen. So third is also fine. The least likely to happen would be you know, uh, the fourth one, I suppose. The color of fur of the species bulbs, which is red, changed to silver, thereby increasing its value to the breeder. Now, first of all, we can easily make this out. That we are, first of all, we are talking about the breeder. We gave, we dropped, again, the hint, because we, uh, you know, dropped the word breeder. Yeah, definitely, but how it will, uh, not, not exactly. Out of one and four, out of one and four, uh, the four is least likely. Least likely. I'm not saying this will not happen, but he, we have been asked all of the following could be. Could be the characteristics of a tamed. Could be. So, again, we are talking in terms of probability, Prashant. So, color of species works, which is red change to the silver. So, highly likely that we are comparing dogs and uh, wolves, foxes. So, dogs normally... Uh, do not have uh, too much hair. So, if they are still, then ch uh, hair change will occur. This will occur first and after that, even 
more likely to have happen is they will lose hair dogs that's why first is even stronger than fourth fourth is this likely to happen because otherwise also we have been asked could be characteristics of but again i just look at the last part of this option value to the breeder so how come you know uh, red to silver will increase the value we don't know there is no even slightest hint of this that's why we could have picked up we could have gambled uh, picking a fourth option so uh, guys clear shall we move ahead now yes guys ashutosh tapan uday neel neha prashant ajit and we have got jyotish also jyotish means astrologer so jyotish are you really interested or you know this astrology Uh, yes jyotish am i audible no i think we should learn this also it will help so many of us the rest of the your friends and uh, you know test takers are desperate about this knowing the result beforehand that what will happen in cat 2015 okay let's move on to the next question the passage help to answer all the questions to the student of evolutionary biology except because we talked about the entire passage talked about the change in the characteristics uh, evolutionary changes happened but there there's no mention of this how come turned up tail will help in surviving better so yeah first is odd first is odd therefore taken out you all are born genius guys we will all get the salary of 1.5 crore per second congratulations let's move ahead now i have picked up again one grammar based question in which we are supposed to pick up the incorrect ones it's question number 61 i just picked up uh, for one or two reasons and uh, let's see what the reasons are uh, we have to find out the incorrect one you marked one that is c only See, I think is fine. Different schools of meditation teach different techniques, but they share a common basis. Focus and attention, or something your mind can return to if you are distracted. This may be now something is being uh, these this in place of this. It should be this something your mind. This is being referred to something. Therefore, uh, it has to be D. Uh, D is wrong. In place of these, it should be this. And uh, uh, what's the problem with this? Another sentence. now return to the school in c uh, b sentence people are finding the piece uh, sorry 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 and uh, yoga studios around the world more and more people are finding turning to etc etc c sentence different school of meditation teach different but they share common something your mind can return to you can return to your mind can return to something specific so c and d are wrong we have to pick up the incorrect ones therefore answer is second option uh, no neha it is not fourth b is fine why c different school of meditation teach different techniques still here we are fine but they share a common basis focusing attention on something your mind can return to return to here after to uh, here after return we have to add to they can return to something if you are distracted now it is another passage which i picked up for the discussion today is sankhya school of relatively materialistic as of one of the uh, no, school of thoughts one of the school of thought means philosophies one of the school of philosophies different sankhya it is a correct pronunciation sanskrit pronunciation is sankhya in english generally we say sankhya it's not sankhya actually sankhya school of and neha yes i can go back to the previous question let's see how so what's your point neha so do you want to ask yes neha i have
don't worry hitesh will shall be taking up this passage structure wise and i'll try my level best to make you understand don't worry so uh, yes uh, we have to find first of all we have to find the incorrect in terms of grammar so make sure that you read the directions also very carefully we uh, sometimes we write find out the incorrect ones sometimes we find uh, write that we have to find out the correct ones so in this question we have to find out um, the incorrect ones so c and d are wrong sentence c in uh, c it should be uh, your mind can return to there should be two preposition two after the word return i'm putting uh, pointing my cursor here and uh, am i clear now neha and d says these may be rhythm so now something is referred to here uh, i'm reading c sentence again focusing attention on something your mind can return to if you are distracted now what is this something now this something this may be now this something these cannot be used for the something the subject here is something in this case because we are saying something can return to and this something can be rhythm of breathing or a mantra or an object so we are talking about the singular yes it should be this not these because again this may be a rhythm right neha why b is correct what's the problem with b then at meditation centers prayer groups and yoga studios around the world more and more people are finding peace of mind by being quiet so what should be before more and more yes comma is there okay Uh, let's move on to next question uh, it is sankhya school of philosophy now uh, let me tell you the uh, attitude of the author here now uh, author is saying something that sankhya school of uh, is relatively materialistic as compared to vedanta he has compared he has drawn comparison between uh, two uh, school of philosophies or thoughts uh, sankhya and vedanta the term sankhya can easily be de derived from the uh, sankhya word the numbers sankhya he has explained this sankhya little divide can be divided into 25 principles etc these are called tatvas first eight tatvas material one tatva principle is moti par etc their remaining 16 are result of this purusha acting on prakriti means cause effect this is from this particular line actually newton picked up his law that every reaction has equal and opposite reaction so purusha and prakriti whatever we talk about whatever we learn in science actually it's everything is there in our philosophies or scriptures or upanishad veda vedas etc and we think that these were brilliant scientists no doubt they are but uh, we believe that indians are you know we believe in copyright means right to copy actually they are they to uh, believed in copyright now the second paragraph says that the sankhya system of ideas does not entirely theistic means not entirely uh, you know uh, based on god only god is given supreme importance it assumes that existence of both matter and a supreme power so universe is not looked upon as a creation of supreme creator only therefore sankhya doctrine is neither entirely materialistic so ultimately in sankhya philosophy uh, we are talking about matter the prakriti and it is inert until it is uh, activated by moti par purusha don't worry but uh, in this the main line is to understand is sankhya system is not uh, you know monoistic it is uh, it believes in materialism also and one superior moti par where you call this god or anything but they believed in and they still believe in uh, this both the areas so if i talk about this they believed in both and he has uh, coined this one term also while this third paragraph i'm reading while these philosophical schools played an important role in influencing the development of indian religion these philosophical schools themselves did not evolve into separate religions they could not so evolve he is giving the reason as they were intellectual traditions without any mass following they lack mass following the lack of mass following had a positive effect as it kept the spirit of quest alive and disallowed emergence of rigid commitment to certain ideas so means uh, his it, it came as blessing in disguise there were no mass followers so rigidity was out in this 
so they were quite flexible which prevented them from taking on the form of religion philosophical schools whether priest or middle uh, remain distinct from religious proper so one of the things that came as blessing vedanta is a philosophical tradition that re remain alive, alive today the reason is that unlike other philosophical school vedanta has been fully integ integrated into hindu religion vedanta literally means end of vedas but actually it is culmination means the highest point of it's not end it is highest point the knowledge of essence of vedanta philosophy human being are souls atma and all the physically all beings are separate essence their souls are actually not separate they are merged into one supreme soul param atma the absolute brahman and the unity of different soul is called advaita on non dualism now here we uh, ask this we based one question friend one question on inference this merger unity is called non dualism means there are no two separate entity ultimate is separate uh, we are one we are merged our soul is part and parcel of supreme soul and it's called monism so doctrine of advaita is central to vedanta philosophy the visible palpable universe around us is considered to be unreal mithya illusion maya and which is supreme reality the absolute brahman cannot be perceived by moral sense etc etc so let's come back to the go back to the questions the relation between advaita and maya is same as between now maya is illusion advaita is what is advaita so can we think of any word here can we think of any word which is uh is equal to uh, illusion here i'm just i'm not asking about the question maya here is in english is equal to what yeah absolutely fine jyotish it is your area that's why i picked up this passage it is mirage illusion by default now this question could have been attempted could have been attempted even without reading the passage because maya is equal to mirage could have gambled in lieu of uh, shortage of time so oasis now oasis is a spot mirage meaning is illusion where you feel that something is there but actually it is not apparent it is definitely this phenomena you will find in extreme summers in uh, non desert area but in desert this is very commonly seen thing mirage is actually illusion not desert deserts deserts it's registan desert like rajasthan is there desert is something else while enjoying desert you cannot you are eating uh, ice cream you will feel that you are eating ice cream yeah uh okay uh, got this so what is oasis oasis is a spot uh in a desert any desert area where you can find life which can support life so mirage is illusion oasis is a spot real so real spot is uh, now let let us uh, correlate this with the passage advaita is in this we have this one supreme soul which is called paramatma and one uh, the illusion is there so maya is illusion is equal to mirage the supreme soul is oasis which is source of life for all of us theism and materialism see uh, we are not talking about uh, first of all materialism is not uh, exactly illusion and theism is uh, first of all there is uh, you know not strong correlation between yeah theism is belief in god belief in god so we are talking about advaita let's go back to the passage and see what advaita exactly is so vedan last last paragraph it says that the essence of vedanta philosophy is that all human beings have souls atma although physically all beings have separate existence their souls is actually not separate they all are merged into supreme soul paramatma or absolute soul brahman the unity of different soul is called advaita it is unity we can't say that paramatma is equal to god or something and it is uh, merging is called theism and non merging is called materialism am i clear hitesh read the second line doctrine the philosophy of advaita is central to vedanta the visible and palpable universe around us is called unreal which is an illusion or maya that which is supreme is absolutely soul brahman cannot be perceived by our normal senses smell hearing etc so 
coming back to the question materialism is fine uh, which deliberately kept this option materialism let's say seems to be very close not exactly wrong first second half is fine materialism is equal to let's say can be termed as maya Uh, but we have been asked read the question hitesh also very carefully we have been asked the relation we have not been asked advaita the meaning of advaita or meaning uh, of maya we have been asked the same relation exists between which of the two from the choices it is oasis and mirage you will find same uh, two things phenomena and desert area but you will not find theism and materialism theism is not uh, supreme brahman or atma soul etc that's why the weakness is there am i clear guys hitesh that's why the best is oasis and mirage even could have done without reading the passage yeah um, amrita is absolutely fine these are examples and we have been asked examples 65 what is implied about the drop of religious thought Now he says that most of the earlier philosophies like Sankhya etc. Uh, did not merge uh, into something you know religion or they were not popular. They were they were there were not mass followers of these philosophies. On the other hand, Vedanta had and still is still has. So earlier why? Because uh, no no uh, it is uh, implied meaning is uh, they were. not flexible religious thought drop away religious thoughts because he says that uh, you know uh, the they were not so called flexible enough to uh, change their thought process or something we can locate the lines also so uh, it is uh, it tends to be uh, it is yeah it is it tends to be inflexible so the based on the simple line so passage states that there were few people in the philosophical school it kept the spirit of quest alive disallowed the emergence of rigid commitment to certain ideas so it implies that they were inflexible yeah yeah definitely it is there in the third paragraph so guys shall we move on to next you're running short of time now okay the ultimate passage of this paper mother of all passages seems to be very easy very tempting but after reading if you try to attempt the question you will find all the questions very tricky very tricky very tricky so what do you have to say about this passage science morality virtue etc so let us talk about straight away question number yes guys are you still there all of you am i audible to all of you am i visible to all of you yeah passage uh, no doubt is tough because while reading the passage actually we are not clear exactly what is the author what he is trying to convey what he is trying to portray what he is trying to prove ulti the essence of passage is that uh, passage is that he did not try to prove anything instead he kept on asking one or two questions and last also a few lines he kept this uh, quest alive of finding answer to few questions so i'll just uh, read the word good so first line can science make you good now i'll just attempt look at this word good and we'll try to attempt the question where is this Okay, I think I haven't picked up this question. There was one question uh, based on the title, and I, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely I can read it. Uh, the first line is, "Can science make you good?" Now, uh, there was one question based on title, suitable title. What would a suitable title for this passage? So there was fight between two options, and the options are, I think I haven't picked up this question here, and the options, uh, question number seventy-five, we are talking about. the virtue of scientific thinking and the value of scientific thinking i'm talking about question number 7 let me check if i picked up this question i think 
I haven't picked up 75th. I picked up. Oh, I just forgot. Okay, uh, coming back to the 75th question. So now good is equal to virtue, not value. Values can be good or bad, but good virtue is always good. So my point is, look, just look at the word. Whenever we are really confused, uh, go back to the passage again and pick a, try to pick up the few hints from where we can uh, think of the correct answer. Whenever we find ourselves stuck between two close options. So uh, let us read the structure again of this passage. What is going on? Can science make you good? Of course it can. It cannot. Some will uh, quick to say no. More than aspiring cars or reading literary journals can. So why should we think that science has any special capacity to moral for moral of it uh, or that scientists by virtue again pick up see this word virtue uh, of the particular job they do and uh, what they want uh, what they know or why the way in which uh, they know it are morally superior to other sorts of people believe me in the entire passage he hasn't specified that scientists are better than or superior to other souls or human beings or human beings are as good as scientists no he kept on asking kept on inquiring about this question and I kept it, uh, you know, uh, writing these uh, there I and uh, this dismal may capture the way of many of us think about the question if indeed we think about it all but there are several reasons why it may not why it may be too quick why people are so uh, uh, you know quick in answering that it cannot be scientists cannot be termed as science cannot be termed as moral so he has given three or four reasons and uh, for example, uh, first of all, there are three different ways uh, of understanding the question and different modern sensibility follow the different senses such as question might have. Some ways of understanding it do lead to a glib means very smooth and straight away refusal, dismissal. But other ways are powerfully linked science to the moral matters means there are certain areas or certain things uh, with the help of which with the, help, uh, with the basis of which uh, we can refute this argument, we can negate this argument, yes, science is not a moral in terms of nature, characteristics, but there are other powerful and believe me, some doesn't mean most. Okay, guys, some is not most, some is, there are few ways, but there are other ways also powerfully link science to the moral matters. Means author is uh, this way or that way is moving both ways. Here are just few ways uh, we might think about the relationship between science and virtue, again, means goodness about whether what, what I, uh, whether aspects of science have power to make us good these are compelling questions is there something about first reason is there something about scientists know what makes them better people than normal runoff if you try to answer we'll find the answer to this question is science is good or bad second says, says that are scientists recruited from a section of humankind which is already better than the normal human beings cannot be if other human beings are good, then scientists are also good. If other human beings are mix of good and bad, they are also mix of good and bad. Bad, so cannot be termed as. Is there something scientists know which is widely shared by non-scientists uh, would make rest of us better, or there is something about scientists come to their knowledge, call it scientific method, that would make practice of non-scientists better, what they master it, what they do master. So, is there something about a scientist that qualified? them to intervene in social political affairs make decision about all sorts of things including but not confined to again he has fired volley of questions volley of questions now the last line of this fourth reason i'm going is philosopher king or scientist politi politicians an anomaly means away from normalcy not normal not aberration not considered normal can we have philosopher or king at same time? Scientists can be politician same time. Yes, we do have got live example, but I'll not use my knowledge here. Uh, we do have uh, no, one president was there, APJ Abdul Kalam, great scientist, great president. Anomaly, an absurdity, stupidity, highly desirable state of can it be desired or it is abnormality? Would the world governed by scientists be not only more rational but also more just? If we are able to answer all these questions, then authors author of the paragraph says that we'll be able to answer this question can science make us good or bad so very very uh, interesting read passage but point is coming back to the question it can be inferred from the passage philosopher king or scientist politicians is inferred inferred we have been asked the inference inference something which is based on 
uh, which is not directly mentioned something which is not the norm he hasn't gone against he hasn't strictly refused negated that it cannot be a norm because again read if you re recall this last line can it be absurdity can it be normal can it be anomaly can it be desired etc so no concrete answer so we cannot infer this it is not a norm or it is a norm something which is absurd cannot be said something which is highly desirable again cannot be said therefore answer to the 72nd question was and is yes can you guess the answer now guys so it's very important to understand the structure of the passage sometimes with the twists and turns in our logics we can confuse you except this title amrita you picked up the title question so did you get the get get this question correct i uh, told you the hint also good virtue etc so the answer to this question is none of above because author is not at all uh, you know third is definitely true something this is highly desirable no neha Uh, i say that uh, he is just asking various option giving us various it is desirable or not it is normal or not uh, it is absurd or not it is anomaly or not so we cannot say that it is highly desirable uh, still the open ended question he has left so which of the following option is incorrect according to the information given in the passage so guys uh, what do you think that uh, answer to this question is i is very very uh, tiring and boring passage question number 74 let's read all the choices one by one there was a time when science was thought to have positive impact on one's morality cannot be or uh, because on the basis of given information we cannot comment on this first choice there was a time when science was thought to have positive impact we don't know modern society faces issue in terms of which authority to trust and what to believe seems to be correct otherwise in general but uh, not as per the passage fourth says all people may not all people may not regard the question that scientists are normally so morally superior to other sorts of people as logical we can't say we cannot be too sure about all the people believe in this or that third most ways of Uh, uh understanding question that scientists are morally superior now coming we have been asked the incorrect one other are incorrect third yes neha third is the right answer rest can be said because other statements are just like uh, open ended question incorrect uh, third choice is the most ways of understanding the question that scientists are morally superior most ways some of the ways are there but most are against this so third option is wrong cannot be termed as correct so let's move on to i picked up this a summary again uh, a very strange paragraph it talks about process by which ideas are born and propagated in human society strangely analogous and uh, similar to analogous to method of biological evolution means it takes time it takes time law of survival or adaptation etc etc we talk about physiological changes physical changes mental changes and is given example also in uh, the takes physical nature to accomplish ultimate of fixed value 70 million years or more to produce an oak tree millions of years to produce horse or a man etc so nature has taken its time so we should also be patient and give time to the society or ourselves so that new ideas better ideas good ideas can be inculcated can be distilled can be permeated can be allowed to permeate in the society so that what the passage is all about that we should not be in hurry to adopt or go for uh, you know paradigm changes etc make sure that uh, uh, the summary should encompass the major ideas so answer to this question again is 76 uh, people have marked this question as d uh, moderate so uh, answer to this is D D choice. Progress of human ideas in nature is similar. Analogous means similar uh, to biological evolution. And consider the enormous timelines. Just look at the enormous word we have given you. The ample hint to pick up this enormous means 75 millions year or something, millions of years. It's enormous, very huge timeline. So again, one of the hints we have uh, given. 
so pick up any choice uh, will go uh, will get uh, you know ample hints clues to negate for example first choice the human ability to generate ideas power is limited by there is no mention that it is limited by or not limited by limited word is weak therefore rejected second says yeah now yeah, first is to be rejected second the progress of uh, ideas in man from their birth to evolution follow the fair similar path of biological evolution thus perfection of ideas we there's no mention of perfection we are saying that ideas to be accepted or rejected or something perfections not being talked about in the main passage third uh, the human ability to generate i process finally evolve the perfect idea is restricted by the same laws of survival that limit biological thus limited by similar timelines so there's no mention that it is limited by it took so many years author has mentioned it took so many years so it will take uh, this uh, social values also will social changes will also take so many years so who say that they are limited or not limited by there's no fixed timeline as per the passage so we have to other can be good inferences they can be good inferences i'm not denying this fact 1 uh, 2 and 3 but the summary is fourth summary summary means we have to sum up the major ideas presented in the passage am i clear guys uh, interesting passage last one it's be between oriental philosophy which we eastern uh, side of the world follow versus western philosophy western civilization oriental we belong to oriental side of the world and they belong to pragmatic or uh, pragmatism they follow pragmatism which is closer to materialism and orientalism is closer to spiritualism so all in all in this passage author has favored western civilization and he says that uh, western civilization or west uh, western you know, people or the philosophies they were more open to changes no doubt initially they were not but uh, they uh, fought for this people fought for the, these changes modernity modernization etc and oriental science we are still following oriental philosophy are still uh, sticking to age old and whenever we try to uh, we went half heartedly as per the passage so all in all it's uh, all over the all over the passage author is uh, praising this western civilization so we believed in philosophical changes inner changes and western world believed in outer changes as per the passage so what about the passage guys so were you able to understand this passage i think passage was easy to moderate in terms of understanding easy to moderate uh neha you have left the session i think your doubts yeah uh, yeah uh, we may know yeah yes you should don't doubt because in my previous sessions also i told you to use scrap paper in order to attempt rc as well to score this now don't always rely on your memory because after let's say this is the last leg now if, if i move on if i if we reach question 80 onwards uh, can be termed as last leg of the any paper and we are extremely tired reaching here by the time we reach here Uh, means after attempt, attempting going through 79 odd questions, if I am attempting 80 to 90, 80 to 100 slot, I am pretty tired. Even I'm, that's why I have seen my um, uh, myself so many times that if I keep last passage very easy, also you people get most of the times these questions wrong, and you term this question, these questions as difficult. It's all because of tiredness. It's not because that we are not able to understand the passage. It's odd because our mind is totally exhausted. So try. uh two or three passages whenever you practice rcs try three rcs in just one go and try to figure out your accuracy in the third rc if it is dropping practice this exercise to keep on doing these three passages in just four passages in one go uh, so as to uh, be comfortable in real uh, you know, test am i clear guys so let's take a few questions neha uh, the timing as far as timing is concerned i believe that we should focus more on accuracy but it should not exceed while practicing when we are in learning mode it should not go beyond 15 20 minutes reading plus uh, 5 to 7 minutes answering the questions but uh, this should uh, we should stretch this time to 8 to 10 minutes reading at the max 12 and 4 to 5 minutes answering the questions so it should not exceed 15 minutes all in all 20 minutes is fine 20 minutes is fine or, or including question answers in real time paper also and uh, you know mocks also and while practicing also it's fine because primary prime concern should be on accuracy 
so it can be clearly inferred from the passage that answer to this question is so fourth is not this not dominating Uh, answer to this is third cut above cut above means author is all along praise for this uh, western philosophy civilization so cut above means he considered and still considers this as uh, one notch up above but we cannot say that uh, this particular uh, civilization or philosophy dominated the another one No, no, it, it is C. Uh, Hitesh, uh, my age-old technique of rejecting two similar choices. Second, say the author regard Western civilization to be majorly predominant over the Oriental one. Read this. Fourth says author regard Western civilization to be domineering. Now, if second is fine, what's the problem with the fourth one? Second and fourth are exactly similar in terms of essence. Therefore, reject it. Majorly subtends cover. Yeah, yeah, it is it, it, more or less it is same, but it's uh, third says uh, that Western civilization to be cut above because uh, you need to understand the tone of the passage also. Therefore, cut above means uh, is considering this as superior to a little bit, a little bit advantages in terms of adapting to newer ways of thinking and uh, ideas, not in terms of physical force, etc. Let's move on to. According to the information, it's a very lengthy question. According to the information given the passage, can be deduced that. I'll not uh, waste uh, much time on this question. So, you'll find this absolutely correct. Let me, if we have to cut the time. It's question number 81, the answer is uh, third choice. We have given enough hints so as to uh, negate uh, the choices, other choices. Uh, oriental people, philosophers and intelligence in general did not have acumen. There is no mention of this that uh, it can be deduced that they didn't have any intelligence. They, they had but they used this intelligence to philosophies only rather than adopting newer ways of life as per the requirements. So second is also wrong. Didn't have the will oriental people. They might be having but uh, can't be sure of. Third say, fourth says, Oriental people, philosopher, intelligence in general did not have the wisdom. This is strictly technically wrong. If I'm talking about the philosophy, Oriental philosophy, philosophy means philo is love and sophie is wisdom. So they, we cannot say that they didn't have a wisdom. Therefore reject it. Let me check if I have picked up any, you know, the, the author would, 82nd question would agree to the statement that In ancient times, selfish, this is pretty direct question, selfish goals of man blinkered the thinking of the times. So last few paragraphs, you will find this exactly mentioned there and other are technically wrong, factually wrong as per the passage. Last paragraph, read last two paragraphs, you will find this third choice uh, explicitly written there. In explanation also, we have uh, explicitly explained that from these lines, we have picked up this choice. Again, 83rd question. I don't know why people picked up this uh, entire passage as difficult. It can be inferred from the passage that Oriental civilization is juxtaposed. It's not juxtaposed. Oriental civilization moved towards the western one. 83rd. In the very first few lines, you will find Oriental civilization moved towards the western one. Ultimately, the first, very first, read first few lines, you will find the second choice intact. Okay, let us see. Uh, okay, let's move on to next question, guys. The last leg. So, so uh, it is a uh, one PJ base uh, para jumping base question. So, so what about question number eighty four? What do you have to say about? Ritesh, Tapan, Uday, Neha, Ajit. Uh, 
Yes, guys, Neil. So, what do you have to say about this question? So, did you uh, get this particular question right? Am I audible, guys? This is question number 84. And uh, uh, it's a very tricky question because we were confused regarding opener. And what will come after opener? The first two sentences were very crucial. So, opener in this case, think we think that A is an opener. We are in race to preserve. So, before applying the tricks, I told you this in uh, my previous session also, read all the sentences very, very carefully, try to understand the gist of the story, what is going on, just try to get the rough idea. Then probably we can think of applying all the tricks, let it be finding closure, opener, mandatory pair, etc. So, are you all aware of all the tricks? Did you see my video on this? First, uh, yeah, we picked up this E is fine. We are able to find out this E, the opener. It is important to understand this is not just a race to save a handful of charismatic species uh, or the animals to which we attach human inspired values or characteristics. So it is, it is uh, important to understand it is not just race. Then what it is, what it is then... Uh, So, if there is any sentence which is clarifying this, that what instead of saving all these, instead of focusing always on all these charismatic species, we should think of other species also. If there is any line highlighting this, this should come immediately after E. If there is no, uh, not any line specifying this very, contrasting this very previous uh, sentence E, then obviously Neha, A will come. A will come. Am I clear? Uh, most of the time I have uh, um, the seen that um, students will pick up option number one as far as this question is concerned. Because if you pick up question number, uh, let's say, after E, A is fine. I agree to this. But point is that then where will uh, we fix this uh, C sentence? C will not come at the end. So that's why. Uh, he has given example. C in... Uh, uh, E, he has given charismatic and C is contrasting with C. Log on is talking about ugly looking, uncuddly, pebbly skin. This is contrasting well with E. Therefore, after E, D will, uh, sorry. Uh, after D, after E, D will come. Uh, because uh, he has given example E, after E, A, uh, D. Because who wouldn't want to save C, otter, polar bear, etc. He is extending this, furthering this uh, charismatic animals, etc. C is contrasting with D, example wise, if you look at. E, D, C will form a mandatory pair. Am I clear, Neha, now? Yes, rest of the guys, Uday, Rohan, Pallavi, Praveen. Last is about a so passage, I would uh, say the passage is moderate, but uh, the concept explained regarding saving, uh, we should save euro from splitting or we should not save euro, it should be saved or not. And the concept is a tricky a little because based on few technical terms, but if you go slowly and with cool mind probably could have answered one or two questions so were you able to understand this passage guys yes so let's see uh, so all in all he's uh, not in favor of either splitting euro expelling Greece as per the passage and uh, if they want to then they should vote people, Euro members should sit together and he has beautifully explained that why initially Euro was formed and how come other members started supporting weak countries because they wanted to uh, keep the jobs in their own country by uh, selling these goods to their imported so-called costly goods to these weak 
European Union countries by helping them financially. So all in all, whatever they the, the any strategies they had or they made at that time, all backfired and now they are in deep waters. But again, he hasn't given anything that uh, Greece should be expelled or other weak currency should be thrown out of the system or not. Can we make any inference about the nationality of the author? Absolutely no, we cannot because there is no mention of, I think this is the last question, uh, there is no mention of uh, any uh, slightest even that we can think of the author belongs to this particular area of the globe. So guys, so the time has come to wind up the session. Last question is 100th and I think we have to pick up the incorrect ones. Should we discuss this or not? I think yes. We have to find out the incorrect items. Let us see what items are incorrect here, what sentences are incorrect. Now this is phrasal uh, usage, idiomatic usage based question. We should not try until unless we are damn sure about the meaning of all the idioms. I picked up this just to uh, tell you that we should not go blindly for all these kind of questions, idiom based questions. Because uh, most of the time we find that uh, we take the, their literal meaning, that actually they are not based, uh, the meanings are not literal as they seem to be. The answer here is, uh, we've been asked a sentence or sentences, answer is A and B are wrong. Option B is the answer. So it is uh, missing out on. It, instead of missing on, it is missing out on. Missing out on means you need to uh, face not experienced means you always try to and uh, don't forget uh, this uh, B sentence in B do not forget to invite Rohit he is always missing on this we have done what is the problem with A you have to square up on it, is, it should be square up to square up to your responsibility you have to face your responsibility bravely so now the time has come to wind up the session guys so three or four important things we discussed that one read the passage carefully we always drop hints so as to negate the choices and uh, rc's major sections kind of uh, make or break section and uh, keep revising grammar principles tricks till the time you take real cat and uh, don't worry about let's say if one or two mock tests you're not able to perform if it is happening consistently then as a cause of worry otherwise don't worry but make sure that you solve all the questions after you take the exam because uh, i've seen that uh, in a comfortable atmosphere our accuracy is much much higher than what we actually have while taking mock these mock tests so time has come to wind up the session so stay focused stay calm be happy chillax and see you next time around so did you get um, Anything out of this session, guys? Should we keep these sessions? Should we continue these sessions? Press yes if should we. What's the answer? Of uh, which question here? Answer to this hundredth is second A and B wrong. Wrong usage of it should be square up to and miss out on. Hundredth. Yes, near Hundredth is second. Okay, but guys, uh, I'll keep on, uh, we'll continue with these sessions and we shall be keeping these sessions and wherever we find things to tell, important things so that it can help you in improving your score. Uh, my point, the motive is to pick up the questions where uh, we've certain values and you know, value addition can be there and we can share a few tricks and hints. See, we are the paper setters and we are uh, revealing the secrets to you all. That's, a, that's an irony here. But uh, this, will, this will help you in cracking real cat. We set all these papers and we tell you the trick how to crack, how to find out the faults and how to answer even the questions without reading the passage. So that's how the life goes. Uh, uh, which, uh, what kind of concepts you are talking about Neha? Uh, what, and what scanning you are talking about? The concept regarding what and scanning of what? First of all, in order to scan RC, to score well in RC, mere scanning until unless you have got enough practice will not help Neha. So you need to uh, revise the stuff also.
tricks also should be very clear about inference based tricks uh, how to find the suitable title etc go and uh, listen to my previous videos on these analysis sessions after uh, most of the time i think we have taken all the tricks but uh, in next uh, mock analysis i'll be taking a few tricks is this uh, you want okay guys uh, let's wind up this session we are running out of time so all the best for the next exams next particular exam and all the exams see you guys